Hey yo, salute to all my subscribers. Special shout out to everybody else passing through YouTube. What's good? Back again with another installment of On Air with Kevin. This one might take a little while, so I invite y'all to uh, have a seat, lay down, and, and you know, enjoy this blog while y'all at work or while y'all in the car driving in traffic, what have you, because I got to talk to the people. I got to talk to the young people real quick, because I got to got a little bit of, of a beef with something that's been going around on, on uh, social media and on YouTube in the past uh, past several days. Mm. But before I do that, though, I want to talk to the young folks. Um, now, this is regarding the drug trade, right? The illegal drug trade. First of all, before I say anything, I don't condone any illegal activity i don't condone any violence i don't condone anything that could possibly land you in the graveyard or in prison whether it be state prison county jail or club fed as they say now with you young folks i want to let y'all know something i i don't understand why in 2018 people continue to get into the drug the illegal drug trade it doesn't make any sense to me because it's not worth it. It's too much technology. It's too many aids out there for law enforcement. You, you, it was hard back in the eighties. It was hard back in the, you know, late seventies, the eighties and the nineties. But at least back then, you know, drug dealers, illegal drug dealers, you know, stood to make a lot of money and had every opportunity to make their money, get out of the trade and get into some kind of illegal business. But nowadays in 2018, like present day, there's really nowhere for you to turn. I mean, because at least back then, you know, you could you could take dirty money, you could find ways to clean it and put it into something legal. But nowadays, there's just too many there's too many roadblocks. There's too many there's too many tools that that the legal system has at its disposal. Yo, you're you're nine out of ten. You're gonna end up in jail. You're gonna end up broke. You're gonna end up right the fuck back where you started. What I don't understand is, and this is for the young people, so pay attention. Most of the drug dealers who I've seen and have come across over the years, I've read about, you know, distant distant friends of friends or family or whatever. Usually, right, the career of a the career of an illegal drug dealer do multiple mini what they call bids or, or jail sentences throughout the, the average you know span of a career for a drug dealer before you get that major sentence that just sits you down for 10, 15 or more years. What I don't get is, right, and this is, pay attention to this for the young people. To be a good drug dealer, to be a successful drug dealer, every drug dealer gets in the illegal drug trade to make money, a lot of money. And while... Those drug dealers are few and far between present day. There once was a time where there were a lot of drug dealers who were making a lot of money. And I'm sure that there still are some out there who do. The risk that they take, ridiculous. They get caught. They go and they send down for life. Here's the problem, though. There are certain qualities that it takes to be a good drug dealer. Um, coincidentally, it's the same qualities that you need in order to be successful in corporate America. I know this for a fact. Um, you know, to be a, a successful drug dealer, to be a good drug dealer, you have to be good at managing money. You have to be good at math. You have to be good at managing a staff of people. You have to be good at, you have to have good instincts. You have to be essentially good at business. Um, you have to have discipline. You have to have work ethic. And you really have to, know how to make adjustments, you know, kind of like on the fly. It's really no different than being in middle management or being upper management or being a CEO for a Fortune 500 company. It's some of the same qualities that are entailed. It's just a matter of steering them towards legal activities or illegal activities. And oddly enough, corporate America is a, is a stone's throw. It's a thin line from illegal to legal it's a thin line because you know the drug game on the streets that's a that's a harsh life you know what i'm saying it's a dog eat dog world 
on the streets. And corporate America is a shark tank. It's, it's very similar. So you got to figure. If you've done, if you've decided to live a life of a drug dealer, to live a life on the streets, to hustle, to make your money illegally, if you've done anywhere from two to five years in any jail anywhere in this country, you've already put in the time that it would have taken you to go get a business degree. So what I don't understand is to be a good drug dealer, if, 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 if that's what you're considering, then why not take those qualities, the same qualities, the same hustle, the same determination that it would take to do that, but rather sitting behind a wall in a room for 23 hours in a day, why not go to college and get a business degree to put those skill sets to real practice and do something that you don't have to look over your shoulder. This is what I've never understood about the drive. I've never understood it. You know, for the people who say it's fast money, it's really not, though. When you add up for the average drug dealer, the average drug dealer is not going to be some kind of fucking kingpin. The time that it takes that you have to put into that to just be the average drug dealer, by the time you break everything down, it's damn near close to minimum wage. See, the problem is too many young people use what they were born into. Too many young people use the fact that they didn't have a father in the home, the fact that you know, they came from a single parent home and this person wasn't around and that person wasn't around. They use it as an excuse. And in 2018, with so many different avenues and ways to create legal income streams for yourself, ways to get your name out there, ways to build up platforms for yourselves, ways to do anything to put yourself on the right path. There's really no excuse in 2018. Um, to be involved in anything that could potentially take your life from you or end your life before it starts by having you in somebody's jail for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Because the legal system, especially if you come from urban environments, is not on your side. I don't I'm surprised that too that too many of you young people haven't realized that by now. So I wanted to start off with that. And this is what I was I this is what the segue is. So there are a lot of blogs going around YouTube right now. Vlad TV is getting a lot of backlash because of what's going on with OBH out of Philly, um, AR Ab, um, him and seven, eight other of his associates allegedly, um, you know, into some heavy drug trade, trade heavy drug trafficking, and um, they're about to face some serious time. And all of the videos, the blogs that I see going around on YouTube, the vast majority blaming Vlad TV because they're saying that AR Ab, you know, his downfall started when he went on Vlad TV and started answering Vlad's questions and talking about what he was doing and buying property and, you know, taking over this, uh, this, you know, drug empire and doing this out in Philly, doing that out in Philly. Listen, I'm not here to speak on you know, what personal shit or charges or activity or whatever is alleged to be or charged to be going on out in Philadelphia. Um, I'm from New Jersey and I grew up knowing how bad that is. But the point is this. How can you, anybody, to all the bloggers and the people who are doing these YouTube videos, how can you blame Vlad TV, right? An individual who interviews people for a living, right? Has a business that is known for interviewing people, asking them questions. How can you blame that platform? How can you blame that person that is responsible for those interviews taking place and not the people who choose to go on those platforms and answer those questions, those platforms that answer those questions? They have a big, there's one thing, there's two types of people that I have a huge problem with. The first type of person is a person who plays the victim, who tries to play the victim in every situation that they're in. Those types of people, you should avoid at all costs. Because anybody who would try to play the victim is a person who is never going to stand up and be held accountable for the shit that they do. 
And that brings me to the second kind of person, the most, in my opinion, the most dangerous kind of person there is. Somebody who doesn't want to be held accountable for their own shit. Listen, if you're a grown adult, I don't give a fuck if it's Vlad TV, if it's World Star, I don't give a fuck what it is. If you're a grown adult and you're sitting down in front of a camera, in front of a man or woman, and they're doing an interview and they're asking you questions that you should know, especially if you're in involved in criminal activity, allegedly, you should know that potentially answering those questions is not going to be conducive to you continuing that criminal activity for too much longer. Look, people don't, uh, some, I think people are starting to realize now, 90, damn near 98% mm-hmm. conviction rate for the feds. The reason is because by the time them alphabet boys pull up on you, raid your homes, raid your businesses, yank you out of your cars, pull you up out of your sleep in the middle of the night, it's already too late. It's no waiting for discovery, getting an attorney, trying to fight a traffic stop, and they didn't have the right to search the car. Listen, you, by the time you see those three letters, whether it be FBI, ATF, and by the time you see them feds coming at you, they've already been watching you for weeks, months, and years. They already know everything you do, everywhere you go, every piece of property you own. They know what's inside the homes. They know what you said on the phone. They got your whole contact list. By the time they, by the time you get handcuffs put on you from any member of that alphabet gang law enforcement shit, not the police department down the street. Those FBI boys, those ATF boys, by the time they pay you a visit, you're finished. You're already done. Best chance you could hope for, finding you an attorney that's going to at least make it so you can come home before you're old and gray. And a lot of drug dealers who had a lot of money couldn't even pull that off. Because there's other components too to go in place with that. See, if you get caught up by the feds, on drug charges, like trafficking charges, the serious shit. Along with that is some tax evasion because you didn't pay taxes on that money. So now you're compounding those drug charges with tax evasion and the IRS don't, they don't play about their money. So basically what I'm trying to say is is, is, I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. So in one breath, I'm saying it's not worth it to put the time and the energy and the effort into being in the illegal drug trade. You can put half that energy and half that effort into going to college and getting a degree. And you can go run somebody's business for them because that's what people who have money, who have businesses are looking for. They're looking for people to run the operations of those businesses from day to day. I know this, right? I have operations manager experience, so this I know. Um, And if you're good at being a drug dealer, then you're... I hate to say it, but yeah, you're good at running, running a business because they're all the same qualities apply. It's just that as opposed to taking a street approach, a physical approach, a violent approach to things, you know, you, you just, you use your mind. It's it's a, it's just a different approach, but it's the same determination that's required. It's the same instincts that are needed. It's the same thing. But as far as this Vlad TV shit, and I won't make this too long because these on air with Kevin, uh, Additions are really only meant to be between 10 and 15 minutes long, so I won't kill y'all with this shit, but stop blaming Vlad. I understand the, in the in the hip-hop culture the issue that a lot of artists and a lot of people have with Vlad TV, but when you as an adult choose to do something, you gotta, you gotta bite that bullet. You gotta be held accountable for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna say Vlad is taking advantage of people in the hip-hop culture. What I will say is that he's a businessman running a business. And just like any any man running a business, it's at the end of the day, it's about that but that bottom line. At the end of the day, if you're you consider yourself a journalist, you consider yourself a reporter, it's about getting that next big story, that next big scoop. That's what you that's what you push for. But anybody who sits down in front of that camera, knowing that there are going to be questions and knowing that those questions are potentially going to have something to do with potentially criminal activity. Why sit down and answer those questions? Y'all have to know by now that law enforcement agencies are watching every single social media platform and medium out there. You have to know that you have to. 
It's oh, and it always only takes one person. I don't care if you have a group of 20, 30 people and y'all are strong and y'all out there committing all the crime and illegal activity y'all want, but y'all been getting away with it for 10 plus years. It's always one person who just can't put something down. Same thing that happened with BMF back in the early 2000s. One person who couldn't stay off that goddamn cell phone. And how did they catch them? And how did all of them, that whole organization get shut down? For catching that one person always talking on the phone, divulging information, and they was listening the whole time. Well, you new generation people, you you new criminals, stupid. Stay off YouTube. Stay off Instagram. You can't be on Instagram posting videos of money and drugs and guns. You can't be on YouTube, on Vlad TV, talking about, I do this, I do that, this is what we do, and think that nobody's watching. The shit don't make no fucking sense. You know, there's a there's a saying that smart people learn from their own mistakes mm -hmm. and people who are wise learn from the mistakes of others. So I really implore you, young people, anybody who's watching this, anybody who's living that street life right now may not understand that you don't, especially if you don't have a record yet, you don't have to live that life. Get the fuck out of that life, because really, at the end of the day, nobody's truly built for that shit, because where it's going to land you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be happy with it. And if you got kids, if you have family, people who care about you, get the fuck out now before before some shit goes down that you can't take back. That's just period. And to the rest, of, to all the bloggers and the YouTubers out there, everybody posting on their social media, yo, stop blaming shit on Vlad TV. You can't, you know, if you, if you fool me once, do something to me, shame on you. But if I continue to allow you to do the same shit over and over again, at a certain point, it's no longer on you. Nobody forced any of the people who have sat down on that black couch, who have sat down in front of that black camera, answered those questions and had those conversations. Unless somebody held a gun to your head and said, sit here and say this. And they wrote a script for you to, to read or what to do, or what to say. Unless that's what happened. There's nobody's fucking fault. Nobody is responsible for what you do as an adult but you. And that's the biggest problem I have with this generation coming up behind mine. Everybody wants to blame it on something and someone else. Like, be held accountable for your own shit. And this is no shade to anyone. This is not no, you know what I'm saying, stab at anyone. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's fucked up what they're going through right now. Because, you know, anybody who's ever lived... You know, in an urban city, urban environment, you know the situation. You know why people do what they do to try and get out of it. But at the end of the day, people just got to move smarter. At the end of the day, people just have to move smarter. You know, and stop blaming other people. As grown adults, stop blaming other people for the decisions that you made, that you didn't have to make. I don't know, man. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Do y'all think that Vlad TV is responsible for the shit that AR Ab and OBH are going through right now, um, and their associates, or do y'all think it's this is solely on the person who sits down to do an interview, knowing that there is a possibility you're sitting there fresh out of the hospital? You know what I'm saying? You got bandages and gunshots and everything. The cops just came and got finished talking to you, right? This is for the people who do this because I've seen these videos, I've seen these Vlad interviews. You fresh out the hospital, got two, three, four, five gunshot wounds. Now you on Vlad TV talking about this and talking about that. Stay the fuck from in front of the camera. That's the thing. You can't mix. There's two things you can't mix. I can be in front of the camera because I'm not engaged in any illegal activity. Right? Uh, shit, I work two full-time jobs. I work 80 hours a week. And the rest of the time, I'm putting into my content. And I'm putting into, you know, writing my next book and getting that out there. Got nothing to hide. But when you're engaged in criminal activity... Shit that you know can land you behind bars. Shit that you know you don't want out there. Why the fuck are you in front of the camera? Shit don't make no goddamn sense. And why are you answering questions on Vlad TV or any other TV? Breakfast Club or what have you. Whatever it is. Wherever it is. If you're, if you're going to do that, don't turn around. And please don't have your people turn around and say, yo... It's, it's Vlad's fault. Or it's, it's Charlemagne's fault. They ask me these questions and I answer them. Fuck out of here. Be accountable for what you do. Hold yourself accountable and be responsible for what you do. Period. Hey, yo, man, I don't pretend to know everything. I just know what I know. Let me know what y'all think about this one.
and I'll see you on the next one. On air with Kevin. Peace and love. <laughs>